Mike, wasn't David Ortiz shot? Wasn't he almost killed in Dominican Republic? Yeah, I had heard, I had heard that. Yeah, and I'm not yeah, saying, and I, I thank God he's alive, but was Barry Bonds shot at? Was Roger Clemens shot at? I mean, we don't even know why he was shot at. So everybody keeps talking about this guy, that guy, and why, you know, why this guy shouldn't be in. David Ortiz was a fan favorite and all that other stuff. It doesn't make any sense. It is you. Can, I understand the writers. I understand why they don't like the guys. That does Albert Bell should be in the Hall of Fame. I've been saying that for a long, long time. Look at the seven years Albert Bell's do, uh, Albert Bell dominated as a professional baseball player. You're never going to see numbers like that again. Enough, seven years long enough to dominate to go in the Hall of Fame. Let, let me let me give you the numbers of Albert Bell, and I, I'll I'll tell you this because you can compare these numbers to some of the greatest uh, numbers in baseball history. Here, I'm going to bring up Albert Bell. What do we do before baseball reference, by the way? <laughs> uh, you're absolutely right. Yeah, you're right. I've had to go to some of those uh, rotisserie, like, fantasy baseball charts or whatever it was. My uncle was saying like they had those, like, coding systems and, like, typewriters and stuff. <laughs> I used to get a book, guys. It was this thick. And you would get it a couple times a year and it would update all the stats and – that's what we relied on in order. If I was going to sign a player, I would need to pull that book out and try to pull a player's history up. It was it was really difficult. Listen to this. 1990. Uh, let's go. I'm trying to figure out where we could start. All right. Let's start. Let's start in 92. 92. He played 153 games, 34, 35, no, 34 home runs, 112 RBIs. 93. 38 home runs, 129 RBIs, 94. Um, 36 home runs, 101 RBIs, 95. Um, 50 home runs, 121 RB, 126 RBIs. Then in 90, um, 96, he had 48 home runs, 148 RBIs. 97, he had 30 home runs, 160, 116 RBIs. 98. He had 49 home runs, 152 RBIs. 99, he had um, 49 home runs, 107, I'm sorry, uh, 99, he had 37 home runs, 117 RBIs. And then in 2000, he had 23 home runs, 103 RBIs. Are you kidding me? That's 10 years. That's 10 years of dominance. For sure. That, that They do say, by the way, today, and I entirely disagree with this, that the RBI is overrated, and uh, that's really not a good stat. Um, I'll tell you what, as a manager, I certainly liked a guy that in the moment had the ability to drive a run in, and that is a skill. That's not a, just a statistic. There are guys that have the ability. I'll help you. I'll help you out with that. Listen to this. Drive a run in. Listen to this. Batting average, 282. Batting average, 290. Batting average, 357. Batting average, 317. Batting average, 311. Batting average, 274. 328. 297. 281. 295. Come on. I mean, look yeah, at these you numbers. You make a great case. I, I mean, this guy is a Hall of Famer. You want to, you want to know his slugging? I mean, it's ridiculous. Why is he not in consideration? He didn't like the press. He never liked to speak to the press. And when the press want the the press wanted to talk to him, he pretty much told him to fly a kite. He never wanted to speak to him. But so because he didn't want to speak to them, you're going to just toss him to the side and say he's garbage. I mean, give me a break. So I lived in Chicago. I've lived in Chicago my whole life to moving to Texas a couple years ago. And uh, we had a guy named Ron Sano. Mm, I know and, Ron Sano. Yep. That was Ronnie. And they, the media hated him. Mm-hmm. And it took years after he retired to get on the radio. He was the Cubs uh, kind of analyst on the radio for years to finally warm guys up enough, but they still wouldn't let him in before he passed away. Wow. And I, I think that was tragic because Ron Sano was a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Well, just so you know, it the the Yankees are down to their last out. It's three to two, and it looks like the Yankees are going to go back to New York, down two to zero. Uh, guys, you know you said something about you know they could use Chapman. Mm. I'll tell you what they really can use is they were a team built on offense, and they're not hitting right now, and they're not hitting with guys in scoring position. Yesterday, at Donaldson, second and third. 
And as mm-hmm. a manager, I will tell you, and I know hitting is not easy, and especially not hitting against, easy against a guy like Verlander. But you give me a guy with second and third and one out, you know what? The B swing will work for me. I, I, I want to run. I got to get something. Mike. I can't, I, can't, I can't have a strike out there. It's Josh Donaldson. His A swing is essentially. Yeah, first of all, he's up. He's the final ad for the Yankees. That's one. Number two. Number two, these umpires have been horrible so far in this in this series. They gave Justin Verlander strikes, and Verlander doesn't need any help from the umpires. Okay, they were giving him strikes when they weren't even close to the strike zone, and it's just it's horrible. And I'm not saying it's hey, listen, they're trying to screw the Yankees. I'm not. I don't believe that. Okay, what I do believe is be fair to both teams. Be fair. If you're going to give Justin Verlander those corners when the Yankee pitchers are pitching there, why aren't you calling strikes over there for them? That, that to me, is just absolutely ridiculous. I don't want to hear about the home team. Are you going to do the same when you go back to New York? The Yankees are the home team. Are they going to get the calls? Because yeah, it's guys, not right. You're touching such a subject with me. It, had you talked to me five years ago on this subject, right. you and I could be on all night arguing how um, – we shouldn't change the game. Right. But you know what? Tennis figured it out. And they had line judges for years. I mean, you guys remember Johnny McEnroe? Of course. Absolutely wearing line judges and referees <laughs> out, right? And um, now they don't have line judges at the U.S. Open. They don't need them because the technology is perfect. Um, I saw this year in AAA. They're now using a system in AAA Pitcher throws a ball, um, it's down, it's low, umpire calls a strike. Hitter does this, top of his helmet. That's a sign, I'm going to appeal. Mm-hmm. And instantly, on the big screen, you can see the the pitch trajectory, and it says decision, ball, or strike. Mm-hmm. It happens within 15 seconds, and I think we're at a point now where why – since we have that available, let's stop fighting. Let's yeah. stop fighting this. I think you're going to have less dejections. You're going to have less emotions, less fights with the umpires, um, less where the umpire maybe has an agenda, you know, dealing with a guy, you know, like Buckner or Hernandez. Um, you're not dealing with that. Right. It's pretty simple. It's a ball or a strike. Now, I wanted to respond to that quickly because you mentioned the tennis aspect of it. They have the – where if the ball is like even a fraction on the line, it's in or, again, it's out if it still has that area. Same kind of thing with other sports like soccer with the offsides. Well, Olympic volleyball, I've seen it too. But in baseball, it's different because you have all, all these different types of pitches and spin rate motions that it could go in. So how, how would you classify that in that case? Would you have it where it's like right on the strike zone is a strike or just barely? Does that have to be majority? What do you think? Well, is is barely a strike. If it if it crosses that line of where it is, it's a strike. If it doesn't, it's a ball. Um, I love Greg Maddox, pitched in Chicago. I'm a big admirer of his, but he got better as he got older, as the strike zone got wider. Tom Glavin, you know, it, we watched that happen both both of them with the Braves. What was what was Glavin getting off the plate? Mm. Twelve inches sometimes. Right. I want to take that away from the game and it's, I'm not being critical of the umpires. What I'm saying is I want it to be right. You want it to be fair. Yeah. Let's make it since we can get it right. Let's get it right. I agree. As everybody knows, uh, we are talking to operating officer and public speaker, Mike Pinto. You know, Mike baseball is very unique by itself. and, And we've seen so many great players and, even the players now, there are a bunch of re- players over the last couple of years that have retired. I mean, Albert Pujols was one of the greatest right-handed hitters we have ever seen. Miguel Cabrera is retiring this year. One of the uh, another great right-handed hitter that we've seen. Are you surprised that it's been a very, very long time where we have seen, you know, dominant hitters, dominant right-handed hitters like this that are now leaving the game of baseball because the last one I remember is Vladimir Guerrero. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Mm-hmm. We are losing some really good players, but the one thing we know about this game, mm-hmm. I grew up in the era of Mickey Mantle and love Mickey Mantle. Switch hitter, yep. Switch hitter. Um, there, we're now, but the game cycles, and there are always new guys coming in. And that's one of the things, if you look at Major League Baseball today, the feeling is, 
there's always a new generation. So I managed independent ball, right? Mm -hmm. And so my guys were the guys that got pushed out. And so a tournament affiliated baseball, move up or move out. So can you imagine being a shortstop for the Yankees on your way up? And you're doing a great job going up through the system. But you had Derek Jeter at the top. Mm. You're not going anywhere. So at some point, they get squeezed out because the next generation is coming. And you either go to independent ball or or try to get on with another team. And that's where the game is gone now. Always new blood coming in. There's not a lot of right-handed power hitters that go to the Hall of Fame. I mean, like I said, the last one that I could remember, Jim Tomei. I mean, if you want to say Jim, Jim Tomei was a right-handed hitter, right? Speaking no, Jim Tomei was, no, was a left. He was left. So, so really, it was Vladimir Guerrero. Vladimir Guerrero was the last power right-handed hitter to go to the Hall of Fame. And you have two guys now, Pujols and, and uh, Miguel Cabrera. These guys are going to go to the Hall of Fame. They're right-handed hitters. So who else do we have coming up? Who, who else? even fits in that profile. Probably Aaron Judge would be the closest thing. 